Today we're visiting Derbyshire's Peak District. Shaped by people and nature over thousands of years, this is a region of dramatic unspoiled geology, yet within easy reach of urban amenities. Now being so close to major cities like Manchester, Sheffield, Nottingham and of course Derby means that the Peak District National Park is actually the most accessible national park in the country and perhaps it's also no great surprise that many of the visitors who come here and enjoy it as tourists eventually decide to take the plunge and make this their permanent home. England's original national park, this landlocked landscape lies within the heart of the country and covers around 555 square miles. Waterways within the park include Ladybower Reservoir. Opened by King George VI in 1945, its construction meant two local villages were flooded. But the region still has many pretty stone-built settlements with their heads very much above water. We moved here 29 years ago from London better environment for the kids to grow up and with typical exchange your terrace house in London and get this, it's just great, it's just superb, it's just a terrific place, it couldn't be better. And our mission this week is to help a city couple make a radical lifestyle change, swapping life within the shadow of the Olympic Park in East London for one here amongst the rolling hills of the National Park in the Peak District. Hello. Yes, a good girl. This is Flora, yes, our Flora. standard schnauzer. She's a lovely girl. She's our best girl, aren't you? It's not just 10-month-old puppy Flora who's going to benefit from the move. Tracy, a retired school bursar, is looking forward to having more room too. I love spending time in the kitchen. I make a lot of cakes and I'm hoping by making cakes I'll find some new friends and some new neighbours and I can win them around with my cakes. I've even started making dog biscuits since Flora's come into our life. 30 years ago, Londoner Tracy met her Cheshire-born husband Tim, a retired head teacher and musician. So I need a bigger room, I need a studio to be able to uh, continue my creative work. All three of them can't wait to switch the sound of bow bells for the tinkle of cowbells. It's so beautiful in the Peak Districts. I mean, our ideal is to just open the front door and walk Flora for a lovely dog walk. There's so much beautiful countryside, just a totally different life to living in East London. Trading in their two-bed London terrace, they're now after a character stone property with a contemporary interior. At least three bedrooms, a music room, plus a garden suitable for puppy Flora and green finger Tracy. All this within reach of a community. And they've allocated £500,000 for their new home in the Peak District countryside. I always think there's a rather Arthurian magic to the Peak District, these great outcrops. As for Tim and Tracy, no wonder they want to come here. Where they live around Stratford has seen some of the most impressive and widespread and expensive property development in recent years because, of course, the Olympics came there. But they're coming to one of the most popular parts of rural England, and so it could make things a bit tricky. But that's why we're here, to do what we can to help them find the house of their future. And what better way to kick things off than with a stroll amongst some splendid Peak District scenery. Well, Tim, Tracy, it's lovely to, um, to meet you at last, having heard so much about you and your ambitions for this uh, enormous move. It's great to be here in this wonderful countryside. You've obviously been thinking about this. What made you finally take the plunge? We've both been lucky enough to take early retirement. We've travelled around the country, we've looked at some locations and our heart is in Derbyshire. Now, the Peak District has always been a popular haunt for house hunters. Never more so, perhaps, than this year, given the buoyancy of the market. If we find you the right property this week, how quickly could you finally make that move? 
Well, we'd like to move this afternoon, if that's convenient <laughs> for you. Uh, our house sold very, very quickly, so yeah. we're going to have to move fast, but we're ready. It's a dream come true for us. We've stayed in some holiday cottages in Derbyshire, and we just don't want this to be a holiday anymore. We want to... This is the life we want to live. Yeah, definitely. Great. Well, I'm very excited to be here. We've got an amazing week of weather ahead of us. So, yeah, let's try and find you something that isn't a holiday, that's more no. longer term. Come on. Thank you. We're starting our journey in the hamlet of Tunstead Milton, on the fringes of the National Park. Less than two miles away, the pretty town of Chapel on the Frith, dubbed the capital of the peak, provides all the basic necessities, along with the choice of places to have a drink or a bite. It even caters for treasured four-legged friends. A five-minute drive west of the town is this lovely whitewashed home. Beautiful. Very pretty Very on the pretty. outside. Yeah, really nice. It's actually the old pub. Really? Ah, oh, right. Obviously, we have got a bit of the, the road here, but yeah. to be honest, you're set back yeah. on yeah. this little cut through here. And when you're inside, you honestly don't know that the road is there at all. It looks lovely. Come on, have a look. This double-fronted house dates back to 1732, and the owner tells me he spent no less than 3,000 hours on renovations. Right. Come in. <laughs> well, it's nice and cool, isn't it? So let's start in there. Go on, Tracy. Wow. Wow. This is lovely. My yeah. music really studio. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know where I'm going to go, but yeah. A bugle. There you are. There we are. It's made for me. It's a scene setter, isn't it? Yeah. It's certainly definitely. got character, isn't it? Is the owner a musician? He absolutely is. Yeah. You're in good company. Really? <laughs> yeah. Come and have a look to here. Okay. This, I think, is your main reception room. It is a much bigger room, actually. Yeah. Uh, Brighter, but full of character, and there's so many nice touches. It's got that feel of the old pub still, but it's it's a house. You know, but you can still, still imagine, you know, 200 years ago, the boys sitting down here after working in the quarries in, the, in yeah. there, or the old girls sitting in the, the other room. Yeah. I tell you what, you're selling it to me. I know, <laughs> You're I selling know. it to me. <laughs> I hope this infectious enthusiasm carries through to the kitchen. There we are. Oh. Wow, another very nice room. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit smaller than we had hoped for in terms of mm -hmm. a kitchen, but they've made excellent yeah. use of the space that they Definitely. have got. But I think having the addition of the conservatory there and the light that comes through it, hopefully will we'll compensate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if we looked through there, yeah, when we went through there, I think it would look a different picture than just what we're seeing in this yeah. corner here, yeah. It's just so different. I think he'd want a couple of hours to look around and appreciate everything that's here. Well, that's just what we're going to give you. <laughs> come on, come upstairs. Also on the ground floor is a dining room, and then moving to the first floor, a central stairway leads to the sleeping quarters. Up here, there's a beautiful bathroom for the use of three bedrooms, with striking original features. This is currently the master bedroom. Yeah, the stonework around the bedroom windows is, is quite... Special, isn't it? It's and the doorway. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I could see myself wandering around here for sure. There is one final bit to consider, and that, of course, is the outdoor space yep. and the garden. OK. Lead on. Let's go. Back down those stairs. Fantastic. <laughs> the conservatory opens to a private garden surrounded by greenery. Look at this, what a, what a day to be house hunting. Yeah, but I've heard it's like this in Derbyshire every day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the garden that comes with this particular property. I guess the other thing to point out is that quite substantial stone outbuilding there. It's just been re-roofed. Whether or not that would accommodate any of your music studio ambitions, I don't know. It's a little small, but it, it's got potential to be so. Yeah. But in terms of flora and it being doggy proofed, I think this is pretty secure. Yeah. The size, it'd be perfect for Flora to have, a, you know, a bit of exercise, but I could do the garden myself. Right then, should we have a think about the cost? Well, I hope the price will be £450,000. I'm going to go for £480,000. It's one nil to you, sir. This is on the market for £450,000. 
Good. I was hoping as well as thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Hugely under budget, this immaculately finished 18th century former pub has three reception rooms, three bedrooms, a dog-friendly garden and enjoys a village location. When Jules told us that it was originally a pub, um, if I was honest, that kind of made me think, oh, do I want to live in an old pub? But when we came in, the attention to detail is just amazing. The house is quite exquisite. It's uh, an eclectic mix of uh, really creative design and thought, uh, so I'm tempted. Well, that's good to hear. Now, Tim and Tracy might well choose to live within the tranquility of a village like Tunstead Milton, but just a 15 minute drive south is the historic spa town of Buxton. Look at the colour on that one, that's beautiful, isn't it? It's really lovely. Known as the Bath of the North and the highest town in England, it could give them a sense of the buzz and culture they might miss from London, but within the heart of the Peak District. Have you seen that one? That looks interesting. The centre is awash with beautiful Georgian and Victorian architecture, and there are the splendid ornamental gardens. It's got great connectivity too, with direct trains to Manchester in under an hour. I moved here with my husband two years ago. We moved up from London. It's a really buzzy town. There's cafes, there's bars, supermarkets, and there's lots of restaurants. There's a vibrant art scene. But within 10 minutes walk, you can be in the hills and the woods. So you can be surrounded by beautiful countryside and birds singing. There's a great market twice a week with regular specialist markets and a fantastic selection of independent shops, including this rather tasty one, stocked with locally sourced produce. Oh wow, look at that. All those cakes, just my cup of tea. Don McCall is the owner here. We've just walked around Buxton and found it to be a delightful place. It is fabulous, yes. Magic little shops like this yes. one. We've been here probably five years now, right, and you've yeah. found people have welcomed you? Absolutely, yes. Hidden There's plenty away. goes on as well. Yeah. We have a fabulous festival, an opera festival, a jazz festival and a literary festival in the summers. Is it a friendly place? It really is a friendly place, yeah. It's, there's a real mixture of people that live in Buxton. You get sort of professionals, you know, that have retired here, lots of teachers. It is fabulous, yeah. And we've been looking here at this uh, original Buxton pudding. Now, we've heard of Bakewell, but not Buxton. It's, it is a similar product. Buxton pudding's a, a more simple product. It was designed to use up leftovers, so it, raspberries and, and some. And when we first got the recipe for it, it was, we made it and we followed it to the letter and it was terrible. And so we, we changed the fat from suet to butter. We put more fruit in and kind of gave it a, a modern twist. Well, you've sold it to me. Uh, could we try some? Absolutely. Ah, the famous Buxton oh, pudding. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much kind. indeed. Thank you. Oh, look at this thick cream. Well, this is very nice, isn't mm. it? Very nice, yeah. These tasty puddings and all that this lovely town has to offer would be on hand for our next property too. It's five miles south of Buxton in the village of Flash, just inside Staffordshire, close to the Derbyshire border. Perched high within the Peak District National Park, it's over 1,500 feet above sea level. I live in the highest cottage in Britain, in the Peak District, and as you can see, what a fabulous place to live. The scenery is just outstanding. There are many highs here, and our next offering in the heart of the village is just one of them. Now then, before we get to our next property, I thought we'd pause here. This is the village of Flash. Have you ever been here before? Do you know it? I've walked through Flash on, on a walk, but that's probably 50 years ago. Well, its biggest claim to fame, I suppose, is that it is apparently Britain's highest village, but there's also this. Have a look at that. As a retired head teacher, that might be quite interesting to you. Oh, right. John Board of Newcastle Esquire founded this school in 1760. 1760. It is a fascinating piece of social history. It is also the back of the next property I'm going wow. to show you. So we have got for you, sir, a genuine... A schoolhouse. Old schoolhouse. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Once two separate buildings, 
They're now joined to form our second property. The other view, the other side of the coin. <laughs> oh. What a wonderful view. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous little schoolhouse. I didn't expect this. <laughs> no, not from what you showed us at the back, most definitely not. So as you see there, the bulk of it is the old schoolhouse. The schoolhouse itself was then given over to add to the existing headmaster's house, oh. which already stood to the left. So yeah, you, you get the full package, mate. Wow. <laughs> House and school together. Thank you very much. And that area is beautiful. Let's see what you think of it. Come on. OK. Let's go. We're starting our tour in what was the original schoolhouse. Now, this is probably a far cry from the kitchen which the original head teacher would have uh, enjoyed back in uh, the 18th century. Indeed. And what a beautiful kitchen it yeah. is. This is just right. I can see myself Put in here. somewhere to eat. Yeah. And yeah, plenty is, of room. This is lovely. Yeah. 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 And then through there, you've got very, very generous utility area, downstairs shower as well. Love it. Really, really lovely. Spectacular. Right then, go and have a look in the old schoolroom. It is a beautiful yeah. room. Yeah. Lovely. Really, really, really nice. You still get a sense of the history with the beams here, too. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. These have heard many a lesson. And probably many are telling off. And uh, <laughs> times tables and all those things they used to do in Victorian days. Uh, yeah. I, I feel at home. Yeah. yeah. I think I could definitely feel at home here. Up on the first floor, there's a family bathroom next to two of the three bedrooms on this side of the house. The largest is just across the stairway. Oh, what a nice room. Yeah, and there's a lot of light coming in through that window. Oh, my goodness. You imagine waking up to that. Oh, yes. Beautiful. There's another bedroom above the utility room, reached by its own set of stairs. Featuring exposed beams and stone, it's perfectly out of the way. For a music room, perhaps. Now, while Tim and Tracy explore the rest of this fabulous old schoolhouse, I'm going to share with you this really interesting bit of archive that the current owners dug up. It shows the then head teacher and his family in 1914. It's absolutely lovely. And I suspect that whoever buys this will also be given this image to go with it. Hello, mate. Hi. <laughs> Have you seen it all, madam? Certainly have, yeah. I've seen it all and more. And more. Well, there is a bit more to come, actually, because um, whilst we have got this lovely little courtyard garden here, there is not as yet any green space on offer. Uh, no. However... However... There is a little bit. OK. Ah. Through the village. Come with me. The final part of this property's jigsaw is just a hop, skip and a jump away. So, this is the parking. Ah. Right. OK, but it also is part of this allotment area, which the current owners have, which would come with the property. As you can see, they've got some chickens on the go. So this parking space and the uh, allotment is all within the price that we're going to yeah. be estimating. Absolutely. Which is the perfect cue, Tim, uh, for me to then ask your wife. Tracy, what you think? I am going to say... £485,000. Well, I'm going hopefully for a cheaper price. So I'm going for a very hopeful 475. It's currently on the market for £400,000. Really? Wow. Mm. <laughs> that is a surprise. I am a very happy man. <laughs> <laughs> Again, substantially below budget, this character-filled home comes with a kitchen diner and four bedrooms. In a pretty village setting, it's surrounded by views across the National Park. It's a delightfully done cottage and uh, it's exquisite in its finish and uh, it's ready to be lived in. So from that point of view, I was absolutely thrilled. The house is beautiful, truly beautiful. And I mean, what an privilege it would be to live somewhere that has got that kind of history to it but for me to have no garden attached to the house I think that will be a compromise that maybe I'll have to make but you know you've got 
the beautiful Peak District right on your doorstep. So, you know, mm. Flora would have that as a benefit. Well, while Tracy and Tim mull it over and the rest of what they've seen today, I'm giving them a breather from property shopping. We've made our way to the village of Hope in the Hope Valley, where I've brought them to indulge in Tim's first love, music. We're joining Castleton Silver Band's band practice in this delightful spot. It was formed in the 1920s, and today there are around 50 members, aged from just 10 to over 70, all under the lead of music director John Whitfield. Wow! <laughs> Escape to the country, certainly as I have never heard it before. I don't know about the rest of you. John, bless you. Very nice to see you. Let me introduce you to Tim and Tracy. Tim and Tracy. Hi. John and the rest of the Castleton Silver Band. The Silver Band, indeed. Not to be confused with the Brass Band, John. Oh, correct. We're very different. <laughs> what is the difference? Sometime in the history, the Silver Band will win a prize that allows it to be silver. The other difference is if you take it to the scrapyard, you get more for the instruments. <laughs> <laughs> for you, Tim, music is a huge part of your life. And we thought maybe this would be an entree into the music scene here in Derbyshire. I started off like that young man over there. But that little star, young man, was the uh, rest of my life. I play the keyboards now, but my heart always goes back to my youth and playing the cornet in the brass bands. He likes the cornet. There's one there, especially for you. Thank you. Do you think you've still got it? Uh, no. <laughs> I haven't played the cornet for 30 years, but I will have a go. Do you want to go and join the 12th cornets over there? I will. Let's try the hemloid, because that's a slow one. <laughs> The band would be a great way for Tim and Tracy to become part of their local community, whether playing like Tim or watching from the sidelines like me and Tracy. I don't know. <laughs> I think that was pretty good, mate. Excellent. My lips are buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> you must be very proud. Very proud. <laughs> John, thank you for having us this evening. Thank you all for letting us interrupt your band practice. Do you think you've got a new member here? Would you have him? Yes. yes. You're too kind. <laughs> Brilliant. What a delightful way to round off a busy day before we resume our tour tomorrow. If you are drawn to the rise and fall of the peaks and are planning to relocate to Derbyshire, here's a handy piece of intel for you. The average price of detached properties in the area is around £88,000 less than the national figure. So, if that tempts you further, I'm meeting local estate agent Mark to get the lowdown on the property market here. Now, of course, you know, one of the great attractions here is the National Park, but properties within it do come traditionally at a premium. Are you seeing that premium rise? Oh, yeah. Year? One of the great benefits of the Peak District National Park is that it's accessible to half the population of the country within about an hour. You know, it makes it an ideal place to have a second home. You can finish work on Friday, get here, have a great weekend. The flip side to that, of course, is maintaining a sense of affordability um, for the locals. There are types of properties which are restricted to purchases from the local area, um, such as um, ex-council houses, which often have very, very attractive village locations. We can sell those properties to, to buyers who have lived or worked in the, in the local area for a minimum of three years. Yeah. Are mm. there any areas you might suggest that are worth a look? Any hidden gems? Jules, you know, there are places just outside the Peak District National Park, you know, which um, are just as attractive. I can give you an example, which would be Cossington Village. Um, it's a beautiful village, steeped in history, and um, as a crow flies, I think it's a mile and a half from the Peak Park boundary. Right, OK. 
If you fancy setting up home here, there are so many wonderful villages and properties both within the National Park and beyond. Those with deep pockets who have a cool £2 million to part with couldn't do better than this stunning Grade 2 listed 16 bedroom, 13 bathroom farmhouse in the village of Middleton by Yulegrave. The good news is it'll pay towards its keep as it's currently run as a holiday let business alongside a family home. But if you're looking to rent, here's a unique proposition for you. This charming three bedroom end of terrace property in a converted church in the hamlet of Thornset is priced at £950 a month. So what better way to kick off our second day of house hunting with Tim and Tracy than with a coffee and a chat. Lovely. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers now. And Buxton's gorgeous gardens provide the perfect setting. There we are. Oh, Two flat you. whites. Thank you oh, very lovely. much. Thanks. I think there is a great advantage to towns like this when you can base yourself in them and potentially live in them without necessarily having to move to the middle of nowhere. Have you thought about life in a, a market town? We thought more of, of being more rural. Yesterday, the ability to be in the village and then be here in less than 10 minutes. I think with places like Buxton on your doorstep, I certainly wouldn't be missing London. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that escape to the country, yeah. but 10 minutes later you could be back in a quite cosmopolitan little town and it's uh, you're having your flat whites, which is <laughs> very metro, but <laughs> enjoying it. I've been used to a sort of a, a country life, but Tracy has always lived in London. And so we've been very concerned that that transition from big city to countryside is going to be smooth for her and the fact that we've got a, a lovely market town like this I think that's that's the way forward for us that we can combine the two things together fantastic well we've given you two I think very interesting properties so far there is one more yet to come of course and that is our mystery house but I am very confident that one way or the other in the next few months you are going to be living your new lives here in the Peak District we have to, we've sold our house. Exactly. <laughs> As recommended by estate agent Mark, our final property is on the southern fringes of the National Park in the village of Carsington. Sitting in the Derbyshire Dales, it's within wonderful walking territory with a great pub where everyone can take a break to get fed and watered. The limestone village may be sleepy, but it's well connected with the M1 and Derby station, both around 15 miles away. In the midst of Carsington, next to the church and overlooking the village green, I've arrived in this beautiful cottage garden. Take a look at that. I think it's a quintessential image of a classic country cottage. And what's more, this really is a property that they can truly put their own mark on. Well, as you can see, there's not an awful lot in our mystery house at the moment. Of late, it has been a rental property, but it does mean both Tim and Tracy will see exactly what they get for their money. I think this has got all sorts of potential, which I hope they can picture and realise. Here they come. I can already hear murmurs of approval. Nice Lovely church. Ah, oh, hello. 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 Are you ready for this? Most definitely. Church house? Uh, not quite church Garden house. house. Well, house. beautiful house <gasps> in beautiful village, as you now know, having wandered around. It is a lovely, it's lovely, beautiful place. Amazing, breathtaking. And you're right next door to the church, so. And what could be nicer? Just can't wait to go in. Should we just stay here a bit longer? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there, Tracy. <gasps> speak to me. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's just beautiful picture book. Honeysuckle over the door. Yeah. It's just amazing. Beautifully planted Beautiful gardens. stone house. Just what we were looking for. In the most beautiful, for. peaceful village. I don't think it's we need to just amazing. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> we truly do. Now, it has of late been used as a rental, so oh, there's nice. nothing in it. Ah, right. OK. So it's going to be interesting to see how you would envisage it. Mm. Should we go and have a look? Please. Oh, yeah. Please. I'm desperate. <laughs> Come on. This delightful property's charm has seen it designated with a Grade 2 listing. 
Its exterior couldn't say English country cottage more, but Tim and Tracy will need some imagination to see our mystery house's potential inside. Well, let's start in there. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness me, what a lovely room. Look at the fire as well, isn't that gorgeous? It's amazing. Beautiful log burner. It would be a very, very cosy mm. living room, front room. Stuff, well, you've got a choice. Whatever. This is one of the tea reception rooms that are yeah. here. We've only seen one room and I could just imagine living here. You'd love it, man. Yeah. I, I, I can't do it. I'm so it. excited <laughs> that you love it. Come and have a look at it. this one. This is, again, equally well proportioned. Second reception room, again, with a lovely feature fireplace to focus on. But it's just, just gorgeous. Right then, let's have a look at the kitchen. Come this way. Not massive, but the nice thing about it is that it is its original size. It's not been shoved in as a later addition. And it has also a lovely original pantry. Yeah, I love it. It's no, not no, a big kitchen that we were thinking about, but there is so many mm. more pluses all around mm. that I could live with a small yeah. kitchen. I so want a garden. And the thought of just being able to that door open, access to the garden, fresh air coming in, and Flora would love that, wouldn't she? Just coming in and out and whizzing around the garden. She would absolutely adore it, wouldn't she? So why don't you now take some time, go upstairs, explore it on your own. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the character continues on the first floor, where the central staircase leads to a beautifully bright dual aspect bedroom. Oh my goodness, what a lovely room. And have you seen the fireplace, the Victorian mm. fireplace? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. The views are I mean, fantastic, aren't they? Mm. Anywhere in the house you can get a, a glorious view of the village below. And what a beautiful village. Oh, another lovely room. Another nice yeah. size Good room size. as well, isn't it? For a second bedroom. Oh. There's a little shower there. So Good. this would be the guest room, yeah. Or oh. well, we could have this one with the ensuite. <laughs> Or you could use the contemporary family bathroom up here. And how about the outside? Ideal for their beloved dog, Flora. I must confess, I'm not tiring either of looking at this garden. I know it needs a little bit of upkeep, but I rather like the wild, woolly nature of it. It'd be a delight to have a garden like this. I couldn't believe that actually we could find something like this. And the house, it's more than we could have hoped for. OK. Yeah, very keen. Should we get down to the difficult bit? I'm going for a, a fairly optimistic £495,000. OK. I'm going to go for £475,000. OK. It's on the market currently for £500,000. Right. Okay. Currently all of your budget, mm -hmm. but talking to the agent, I think there is a conversation to be had if it is of interest to you okay it's of interest to us yeah it's very much <laughs> of interest to us yeah. yeah very much so we'd like to yeah. have that conversation yeah. yeah this grade two listed home has come in right on the nose of the budget with its many original features three bedrooms and well-established garden all set in the heart of a village when we drove into the village, it was stunning. And then we approached the church and walked up the path to the church. And there at the side was this beautiful, beautiful building, which we couldn't believe our eyes. It's just everything we wanted in a beautiful package. It just seemed too good to be true. And just walking around the house, it's, um, it's just too much, really. I just love it and I think I just love making it into a home for you know for Tim and I and Flora um, it's just beautiful wow there we are there we are sounds like we've sold it <laughs> I think so maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> depending on the conversation yeah. well that's yet to come of course but uh, our house tours are now over but I'm very happy with what we've shown you thus far so time to think and plan Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Come on, Lots let's go. <laughs> With 90% of the land classed as agricultural, the Peak District is home to some 1,800 farms. But they're not all farming as we know it. 
I've come to the beautiful Oldport Mill on the Haddon Estate, next to the River Wye, to meet Sammy Holmes and John Ward. They took their love of food to the next level when they made their own escapes from former careers in nursing and engineering to establish a new one together in the world of fungi. Hello, Hi. Sammy. Hello. Hey, John. Nice to see you. Hello. Wow, what an idyllic spot. This is glorious, isn't it? Now, guys, Derbyshire is famous for a great many things, of course, but mushrooms <laughs> are a new one on me. What got you both into the mushroom game, so? We just saw a programme on TV about growing mushrooms in coffee and we just thought that's a good idea, let's give it a go. And I suppose the attraction there, John, is that you don't need acres of fields, do you? No, that's right. They're grown in a, like a hydroponic tent, so you can start off with quite a small unit and once you gather your skills, you can double that up to two tents and you can just expand and expand as, you, as your skills grow. And in terms of the science behind it, has it required a, a bit of a learning curve? It is quite a unique organism. It does start off with a laboratory process. Um, starts off in a test tube, um, then multiplies up to a Petri dish, and then into a small jar, then into a bag, then into a, a, a bigger bag. I mean, was this a leap of faith when you decided to transform yeah. your lives and, and become, well, farmers, I suppose? I did, I did think it was quite crazy. It was the local food issue, wasn't yeah. it, that we wanted to get involved in. And the chefs loved the fact that it's all locally grown, locally sourced. But you're not growing your average button mushrooms, are you? We're growing oyster mushrooms. They're very pretty. Sammy and John took courses in how to successfully cultivate mushrooms. Theirs are grown inside these old mill buildings. Now, I've only ever seen oyster mushrooms on my plate, so I've got absolutely no idea what to expect. So this is the, the mushroom mycelium. It's the, sort of the spores, the, the seed um, that we grow the mushroom from. But this is where the process starts. This is what we call incubation room. So what's in the bags? It's mainly wheat straw, spent beer grains, and used coffee grounds. Are you effectively recreating a, a woodland environment in that bag? It replicates a tree so that in the wild the oyster mushrooms would grow out of a tree trunk. So we use these to replicate ah, the tree trunk. Clever. So how long does it take for the mushrooms to appear? Six weeks maybe from beginning to end. So you get to crop every six to eight weeks? Uh, we crop daily. It's a continuous process. It's a climate controlled environment inside the tent. So what we're trying to recreate is autumn a continuous autumn over 12 months. There's an endless supply of beautiful mushrooms here. Sammy and John pick around two kilos every day. I honestly don't know what to say. Here's another planet. It's planet mushroom, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you get your hands either side of it and then just twist and pull. And oh. then pull. That's it. Brilliant. Oh, my goodness me. That is absolutely beautiful. And you can see the structure, can't you? Yeah. They smell amazing. Yeah, they smell good, don't they? Can't wait to taste them. How about some pinks? Are they ready? Yeah, they're ready. So you just twist and pull again. Look at that. The beginning of summer when we get the pinks in. Amazing. And after being teased with their earthy smell, it's almost time to tuck in. Amazing. Just need to chop the very end of the stalk off. My carefully picked mushrooms are cooked in rapeseed oil. And voila! as the chefs say. That is the sound I know and love. Yeah. <laughs> Mushrooms gently cooking. And what better spot to savour them. So, John, <laughs> while you've been sitting around... <laughs> no, enjoying the view. <laughs> and why wouldn't you? Get stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so meaty, aren't they, when you look yeah. at them? Yeah. A little sprinkling of mushroom salt. So here we go. Mm. The texture is amazing, isn't it? Absolutely mm. amazing. But it's so inspiring, I think, to find a couple like yourselves who, like so many other people, I think, at the moment, are considering, what do I want my future to look like? Mm. And here you are, you've done it. You are literally growing your own future. <laughs> Brilliant. Live in the dream. Live in the dream. <laughs> there you go. Let's eat to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, of course, we always love to give our buyers plenty to consider. 
during these house hunting weeks. But something tells me over the last few hours, both Tim and Tracy have done more than just think about all that we have shown them. Apparently, they've been quite busy. How are you doing? Good, thank you. <laughs> That's all looking a bit conspiratorial over here, isn't it? Well, I'm very happy with the properties that we have shown you uh, this week. Because you were clearly very taken with our schoolhouse though yesterday afternoon, Tim. Yes, I was. I, I would have happily have moved in there that afternoon. It was uh, just what I wanted. But I'm not a gardener and Tracy is. And uh, what she really wants is uh, that cottage, but with a lovely garden. But then, of course, we tried to rectify that situation, Tracy, by bringing you to our final property of the week, our mystery house. We left there about, what, three hours ago. Come on, what have you been up to? Well, uh, we had a discussion and uh, we decided that we liked the property so much we would like to try and get in there and uh, make an offer. So we spoke to the agent and finally, after some discussion, we made an offer to take to his vendor. So at any moment now, the phone may ring, it may. fingers crossed, and uh, we'll know how the story ends. But what would it mean for you, Tracy? How big a deal would it be? We are just so sure this is the right place for us. Well, I really hope that the phone does ring in the next few hours, who knows? But fingers crossed, you will be here in the region in the next few months and we'd love to come back and see how you get on and discover what you've made of it. Well, you'd be very welcome. And I'd just like to say how grateful we are. We've really appreciated all that you've done for us over these last few days. And it would just be the icing on the cake if that call came. So thank you. Wouldn't it just? <laughs> Well, I am delighted to tell you that just a little while ago, I had a call from Tim and Tracy to tell me that finally their phone rang, it was the agent, and they have had their offer on our lovely mystery house accepted. Needless to say, they are over the moon and looking forward to starting this brand new chapter in their lives here in the landscape you see behind me. I could not be happier. And I'm sure we'll be catching up with them at some point in the future to see how country life is treating them. I'll see you next time. If you would like to escape to the country in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales or England and need our help, you can apply.